A spring of water issuing from the hillside, or from clefts in the rocks has often been the parent of mystery, of myth, and tradition. The knowledge, common in older times, did not enable the people to see that the spring was merely the outflow by natural gravitation of the rainfall on the more or less distant uplands. The portions of all the strata through which the water had percolated, and which portions, unseen by the eye, but present in the taste, it now held in solution, was thought to be a natural quality of the particular water. And as ordinary medicines are always associated with unpleasantness of taste, so in waters impregnated with mineral ingredients, the harsher the taste, the greater medicinal properties were attached to them. And the higher temperature of many mineral springs was also considered to be an innate property of the mystical, almost miraculous, particular waters. As the old Greeks had in their pantheon of the powers of nature, naiads, or nymphs of the fountain, so in older Scottish folklore the streams had their kelpies or other guardian spirits. When the Christian church became paramount, the Catholic canon of saints and angels took the places of the Teutonic and Scandinavian sprites, each spring was dedicated to, or became the property of, a particular saint, and it was he or she who gave the waters their special qualities. At some of these holy springs or wells it was customary for ailing persons to go, for the cure of their diseases on the first Sunday in May, they washed in the streams, and left presents to the tutelar saints, pieces of money were put in the waters, or poor people would place needles and pins, or other small articles, therein. On a hill near Stirling was the well of St. Corbett, to which pilgrimages were thus made. To drink its waters was a safe and easy insurance of life throughout the twelve months ensuing. Up to a hundred years ago crowds of persons came to the blessed well, drinking copious draughts of its waters, but too often mixing these with the strong waters of Kilbaggy, of Glenlivet, or other such brand. The wise and evidently did not approve of this adulteration, for with the practice is well lost its life-preserving reputation. The waters of the well of St. Philan, in Strathfilan were supposed to be curative of insanity. The patient was roughly thrown into the pool, he was then taken to the adjoining chapel, and left bound therein during the night, if likely to recover he would be found loose in the morning. Mothers brought their weak and ailing children, bathed them in the well, and as a propitiatory fee to the saint, hung a bit of ribbon, or a scrap of colored cloth, on the witch elm which shaded his spring. Five hundred years ago it was esteemed the most miraculously gifted shrine in Scotland. King James V is said to have made a pilgrimage to it from Stirling before he went to France to woo his future queen. A well at Muthil, near Creef, was thought to be a cure for whooping cough, the waters had to be drank before sunrise, or after sunset, through a cow's horn. Another well nearby had a reputation as curative of madness. A third well was dedicated to St. Patrick. How it came to be so is not easily understood, for the British priest who became the Apostle and tutelary saint of Ireland, had no connection with the district, and yet his day in the calendar was formally observed there as a holiday. In Strathnaven is a small lock of supposed healing waters. There was a rigid rule as to the mode of bathing. Persons must walk backwards into the lock, when at sufficient depth they are to immerse themselves, leave a coin, then, without looking round, walk ashore, and so away. The Well of Spa, near Aberdeen, had a high reputation for its medicinal virtues. Its waters were conveyed from the spring by a long white stone, with the images of six apostles carved upon either side thereof. In 1615, Dr. William Barclay, an eminent physician, published a book on the virtues of this well, giving some extraordinary instances of cures from what seemed mortal ailments, by drinking its waters. The Reformation brought loss of prestige to the old Romish saints, and the Scottish Kirk is found testifying against pilgrimages to reputed holy wells. The following is an extract from the Presbytery Book of Strathbogey. September 14, 1636. Peter Watt summoned this day for going in pilgrimage to the chapel beyond the water of Spey, and confessed his fault. Ordained to make his repentance, and to pay for Mark's penalty. Agnes Jack summoned to this day for going in pilgrimage to the same chapel and confessed she went to the same chapel with an deceased woman, but gave her great oath that she used no kind of superstitious worship. She is ordained to make her public repentance, and to abstain from the lake in time coming. 
Margaret Davidson was adjudged to an unlaw of five pounds, for directing her nurse with her bairn to St. Fithax well, and washing the bairn there for the recovery of her health, and for leaving an offering in the well.